All right, take two. How are you now? Just when you think everything is going fantastically. Broadcasting from the studios, the Theory of Things studios in Castle Rose Street, Sydney, Australia. It is the Theory of Thing Investment Podcast, Season 8, Episode 3. Uh, remember, if it's talked about enough, it's a thing. Uh, this show is brought to you by the Australian Mutual Funds Exchange. I am James Whelan, Investment Manager at VFS Group. I'm a white male, aged 41, almost 42. Uh, I am wearing a navy blue suit. Uh, although the jacket is off, I've got a white shirt with the sleeves rolled up. Um, I'm joined by Heath Moss of HLM Investment Group. Heath, how are you now? Very well, thank you. And I hope everyone else is well out there. Uh, it's a lovely day here in Adelaide. It's getting a little bit cooler now, getting that real autumn weather that, uh, you know, we've been expecting. It is starting to switch around a little bit. Uh, yeah. Also broadcasting from, just think about where we are, Gadigal Land over here, which is fantastic. So, uh, in the Euro Nation. Now, keep in mind also that all anything on this that thinks that you think is advice is general in nature. If you want to talk to someone, talk to someone who actually knows what they're talking about. Um, look them up on the phone book uh, or talk to Heath uh, or myself and see how you go. This episode is being recorded. Uh, it's 11.18 on the 28th of April, 2023. Right. Now, we just had last night the – this is going to be a quick one, guys, real quick, in and out real quick, and then we can get on with the beers. The Mate, we've just had the best night since, like, January or something overnight. Um, yeah, yeah. Absolute yeah. cranking. Um, Meta doing all the heavy lifting last night. The irony and the switch around that as being that bit, that short idea last year was my absolute best trade um, that I ever made. Um, and this Great, everything cool. is just completely switched around, um, and it's all going upside, and it's all thanks to the artificial intelligence units. Yeah, yeah, and uh, they they, they t- ticked over three billion um, active users on all their platforms for the oh, first time. It, yeah, yeah <laughs> um, and and look, there is there is a lot of runway there. I mean, they've got their problems with advertising and and whatnot. Um, but you know, I think you look at that WhatsApp sort of um, messaging service that we use, and you know, over a billion people use. Um, there's a lot of scope there. I think if if you use the the is it the WeChat. Um, model over in China where yeah. basically that app does everything. They do everything through the app. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, there is there is no reason why why uh, Meta, I keep on going to call them Facebook. but I'm not calling Meta. it Meta. I think it's stupid. <laughs> yeah. Um, they can't do the same. So, look, I mean, whilst I'm not, I mean, I'm not in uh, Meta itself, I think um, they've still got a lot of problems ahead of them. Ahead of them. Um, I'd rather be in something like a Microsoft or a Google or something along those oh, lines. Yeah, I know. Um, they, they're, they're the, the turnaround story is there, and they are trading on cheap enough multiples to make them uh, attractive. Yeah, I, I, well, <laughs> cheap enough multiples. I mean, I was looking at what um, where the market was. I actually had a little chart up in front of me a second ago. Hold, please. The just talking about just how stretched the market actually is um, for it. And I sort of had some things here. Let's see, rice shortage, heat. Yes, it's very hot. Inflows, uh, tech valuations. Now this is a, this is a real big stretch of this uh, of a chart to to put tech valuations. So this is um, PE this ratios is as forward. a basket. Yeah, yeah, just yep. uh, S P yep. the S and P five hundred information technology index, and that was looking at it's twenty five times, but mm-hmm. it's talking about when it was up around that twenty eight times. You know, it was really really stretched. Yep. I mean, interest rates were zero. So this yep. this person was drawing a line, just saying, you know what, if if it's at twenty five times, you need rates to be like three hundred basis points lower than where they are in the states now okay yeah. it was interesting i mean if, just because you put two things on a chart doesn't make it right but no you do look at the historic average average of where the um where tech has actually been with regards to its pe ratio and yeah. it's usually anywhere between 15 and 20 during the COVID yeah. days it was well up towards 30 but yes it was yeah i think it's i think it is a touch stretched yeah. i think i was listening to UBS. So yeah listening to ubs the other day they were saying that we think Look, look, based on based on the you know if you do the numbers on this one, you need earnings to be up thirty percent from where they are right now to be able to meet these expectations, and that's just not going to happen. No, no. And uh, uh, listening to the Amazon call this morning or snippets of it, yeah, uh, there are there are signs of stress there. Whilst they they beat the bottom line and and revenues, the, the beating, and this is the same with all tech. All tech have have reported better than expected earnings this year yeah. uh, this quarter. Uh, but it's all on revised down earnings. I mean, these these earnings uh, estimates have all been revised down quite a bit over the last six to nine months. So you know they're lower hurdles to uh, to jump over. Um, so Amazon were saying themselves their, their fresh uh, their free cash flow uh, is a lot better 
uh, yep. at the moment because of the supply chains opening up. The inventory management has been a lot easier in that. They're not having to stock a lot more inventory, you know, because the supply chains are clogged up. Um, but in terms of AWS, which is, you know, obviously their most profitable division, they're seeing profits down 21% quarter uh, versus the same quarter last year mm. um, revenue is only up 16 percent as well so um, there is a, a lot of slowing going, going on there and and the most concerning thing because you know Amazon aftermarket popped uh, quite heavily on on the back of this earnings report and then the earnings call came in half an hour later and it dropped like a stone mm. on the back of them saying April numbers um, in terms of revenue growth for AWS were 500 basis points lower than the Q1 average. So they're seeing a, a quite a significant slowdown in April. And I've just been going through and looking at a few notes. It seems the same is happening across the board in the US. We've seen McDonald's say they're seeing a decrease units per transaction globally, and especially yeah. in the US, in April. Um, Google uh, noted that uh, uh, advertising revenue was, was also slowing in April. Uh, was it Pepsi and Coke also noted uh, the recent slowdown? People are paying, uh, willing to pay uh, less. Uh, sorry, people are not willing to pay the higher prices now as they were at the start of the cycle when these higher these the inflation really took off. People are more resilient. They're going in with a set price in mind, and if it's not at that set price, they're not they're not paying it. So uh, it really see, seems after Q1 in the US, things have started to really slow down. And I think people are using that SVB collapse in March as a sort of the pivot point for the consumer. Mm. Uh, they're saying it really rocked the consumer confidence and that's where things have started to really slow down because we saw GDP come in the US last night a lot lower than expected, plus 1.1% on Q1 versus 1.9% expected. But consumer... Heath just dropped out. Heath, you there? Over? Heath, you've just dropped out. What you're about to say is that consumer spending was actually showing quite it, strong. Yeah, it's actually quite strong. Um, yeah, I lost, but it, yeah, it, I lost it, you there for a sec, but you're right. Oh, sorry. It, it seems it seems as if though that slowdown has started. And I, I went sorry to ramble on a bit, but I, I did I did go back and have a look at the um when this all happened in 2007, 2008 in the GFC and how the US consumer responded and as i've said before it's okay until it's not and the u.s consumer dropped like a stone all of a sudden yeah it was strong it was consistent it was solid retail sales were solid and then as soon as the economy turned over you saw those plummet you know minus four percent minus seven percent that's it that's was, exactly um, it the, the, it was the, okay the, until it wasn't and, yeah. and that's what i'd expect the same thing to happen in the second quarter and third quarter in the u.s uh, well, this year. that's it, it's it's not outside the realm of of being and that's the thing about the consumer that that it's there's Anyway, look, we can go into that all uh, all day, um, mate. I've been looking at uh, May. You know the stupid sell in May, go away sort of thing that everyone talks oh, about. We love and, it, don't we? Uh, the rhyming season is something else. Now, looking at some charts here, my old mate Ryan Dietrich is, and this is just me. This is the sound of me tapping in because we don't really research this at all, and it's just us slapping it together. I'm kidding. We actually research a lot, but my computer just restarted while I was um, just before I started. Uh, Selling my, selling my, selling my. So um, now he's got some good stats about the S and P five hundred going back to nineteen fifty. Uh, the six months that we are going into are the worst possible six month combo um, that you can have for the US market. Still, on average, it's up one point seven percent at least. So that's that's mm -hmm. what that, this whole selling my sort of situation that goes on is is not. May traditionally is a little bit weaker. Um, and especially if it's the year before presidential election, which we are, Joe Biden going around again for some reason, uh, it's uh, it's usually a little bit weaker in this time as well. But usually, still, it's 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 historically it's an okay return that you can get out of it. So, yep. don't go nuts. I am I am advising that we I'm advising clients, and I'm also acting on acting on this too, is just thinning out a small amount of of the market and just switching it into. Bonds. The the good thing about this market now is that it's working rationally again. Yes, where yes. it's going up, and then you have a situation where you know what? If I want to get out of the equity market, then you can then switch it into bonds and actually get some sort of a return for a short amount of time. That's mm. that's the way that it should be, and that's the way that it was before all this nonsense. And when I went back to it, your 60 40, 60, 40 portfolio is fantastic, and uh, and you should uh, and you should act accordingly based on that. Now, like I said, it was going to be quick. Uh, anything else that you've got? 
Uh, no, just just to add to that, I've been switching clients into bonds and more defensive style stocks as well. As you said at the top of the market, I mean, uh, at the top of the show, we had what a two percent move on the SP five hundred last night. It was the first time since January. I mean, yeah, it's been a real dull, um, cautious market, and we're not used to that yeah. <laughs> after what happened in twenty twenty two. So, I've been moving a lot more money into bonds, the uh, USTB, GGOV, AGVT ETFs on the ASX which I think are all excellent uh, vehicles for that sort of thing. But, uh, yeah, that's 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 basically – oh, a bit of gold as well. I think gold is, is acting quite uh, positively here, grabbing some of the gold ETF. Um, I still expect yields and the US dollar to grind down over the year, so that will benefit gold in, in that time. Now, I know you're big on lithium. You sent me a note from ANZ, yep. the commodity yep. call. Did you want to speak to it? Because my yeah, look, I've got it in front of me. Look, I think – I think we're at a stage, and I'm not saying, you know, go all in, um, but look at the stage where lithium is bottoming. Uh, certainly the spot prices, uh, spot prices in China down 70% or so, but we're coming to a point where uh, battery, producer, uh, battery producers are having to restock um, and buy more lithium. Um, and in terms of the uh, the cost matrix, uh, to, to produce lithium these days is actually more costly. So, you know, mm. that, that it's come back to those marginal uh, costs uh, the price has in China as well. And they make up most of, most of obviously, what uh, is uh, made in terms of batteries around the world. So I'm seeing that uh, uh, lithium prices are bottoming. We also had news out of Chile during the week, which is one of the world's largest producers and uh, holders, reserve holders of lithium as well. Yep. And they're looking to sort of semi-nationalise their lithium industry. They're saying by 2030, everyone who's got a project in Chile, there needs to be some state ownership. They said they'll respect current contracts up until 2027 or something along those lines. Yeah. But outside of that, they're nationalising. And and that that is that is concern. That is obviously the sovereign risks you take with some of these countries. And that's going to benefit Australia. Uh, and we already saw it, and I think this is part of the reason Albemarle uh, um, came across and made that bid for Lion Town, as they saw the writing on the wall. They're a major producer in uh, Chile and Argentina, and uh, they want to diversify their production mix a little bit more. So I think we're going to see a lot more merger and acquisition stuff, especially with uh, companies here in Australia. We are one of the large, actually, we are the largest producer of lithium in the world at the moment. Um, we don't have the reserves that Chile and Argentina do, but we do. We do. We are producing more. So I think the bottom is is in there. We, you can start trickling in some money. I've said it before. I like mineral resources. I like uh, Pilbara resources, especially Pilbara with such large cash holdings. They announced this morning of around two point eight billion dollars. So nice. I'll be on the lookout. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and explorers, I like PMT Patriot Battery Metals and GL One Global uh, Resources which um, PMT have that very, very large green pushers style um, deposit in uh, Canada. And I think they're both targets um, for a takeover as well. Uh, Fantastic. Somewhere down the line. Okay. So, yeah, I think, I think yeah, the, the, the bottom may be in for lithium. Now, if we if we if if that goes all out the door, if we have a nasty recession, global recession, because, you know, no one will want to buy anything. But um, if things sort of amble along like they are, then uh, we should see a turnaround there. Well, I think the recession's been priced, but if, the only way that it would actually be an impact on certain types of markets is if there was an actual a huge recession. It's a matter of how deep and how far. One of the yeah. things that I've been looking at um, this week and uh, uh, in my time away at the farm when I was away, um, just with a bit more time to actually get into some research and do some reading there, um, was just how hot it's actually go it's it is at the moment and how hot it is going to continue to get. Look at record temperatures. I mean, there's a rice shortage already that's underway. We're looking at record temperatures through Thailand, Vietnam, um, Turkmenistan, China is just going crazy, all bra breaking their records over there. Looking at the daily sea surface temp, which the average is so far above um, past historic averages that it needs to be respected and it needs to be noticed. We've mm -hmm. got the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said that they've got an El Nino likeliness at about 62% coming up uh, towards the back end of this year. And you've got our Bureau of Meteorology that have also declared. So in March, La Nina was declared off and El Nino is declared potentially. They've got a 50% chance of it happening by the end of the year. So um, they, they both move in, in sort of different cycles, but they're all sort of related at the same spot. It is going to get hotter. 
Um, food is going to be in more scarce supply, but I don't see this as actually impacting the food ETF like I did before, um, where I was a huge buyer of that and then got out for a very nice profit and actually managed to take profits all the way through. So proud of that food track. It was incredible. Um, I actually see this one now as relating to water. So I'm having a really good look at a water ETF. The ETF, which I'm looking at, and I know because we've got to have trade ideas, we're going to have something. The one that I'm looking at, I'm not saying I'm, going, I'm charging into it yet, but I'm very, very close to, to, to doing it is the IH2O, uh, the iShares Global Water ETF. Trades over in London. Um, it's just got um, water. It's investing in companies within the S&P Global Water Index, which contains companies involved in water-related businesses. So it's um, uh, utilities, infrastructure, equipment, materials, all in the water space, and that's what I'm looking at as being one of those big thematic things that I go into, similar to, similar to food, similar to copper, similar to... Oh, what have we got going on? Anyway, that's uh, well, the other one. Oh, the, the FTSE 100 is the other one that I'm into. So they're just these big thematic things that you just hold and sticky. You know, it runs 20, 30%. And, and then when the theme sort of stops being a thing, then you get out of it. So I don't think this food is going to go as well as but based on this thing, based on how well it did during La Nina. Um, yep. I think that probably maybe aerospace and defense might be more of a more of a buy um, on what's, what's ahead actually coming on with this thing. So that's... Uh, that's really bad tension. Now, football. It, well, actually, just quickly, there, yeah. there is a there is a water entitlements uh, vehicle listed on the ASX as well. Uh, the Duxon Water, uh, what is it? Duxon Water Limited. Yeah, D- no. DTO. I, I, yeah. yeah, that's that's one. Yeah, single stock go nuts on that. I, yeah. I really just, I, yeah. I've just, I'm really awful with the single stock stuff in this sort of specific okay. things because you Fair do enough. it. It's mate, you, gold can go up. I'm the guy who buys Newcrest, and then. You know, I'm not saying that I put a curse on stocks, but some companies should pay me to not invest in them. Um, <laughs> it's New Crystal. New Crystal finds some way of screwing up, digging oil, uh, digging gold out of the ground and putting it in a safe. Mate, yeah, anti, anti-marketing sort of fee. Yeah, know? yeah. I'm the, I'm the ETF guy. Stick to what you know. I'm actually the mutual funds guy as well. Don't forget this. Uh, this uh, this show is brought to you by the Australian Mutual Funds Exchange. If you want access or exposure to most of the mutual funds around the world or from one simple platform that you can go and click in and put your login details in and get access and exposure to the Indian funds, direct specific Indian funds, which I've been looking at closely as well. Um, Go to amfex.com, put your details in um, and start trading away, doing whatever you want to do. It's it's just so simple. Um, All the feedback that I've had on this thing is is absolutely incredibly positive. I really love that they sponsor us and I really love the work that that they've done built by a few Ukrainian guys um, that just did an amazing job. So amfex.com, go and check it out. Go and have a look at the funds. Even if you just use it to be able to search through funds and compare things and look at what the holdings are, go nuts, do that. Um, that's a really good way just to, to just to do your homework and get your research put into it. Um, now we can switch over into all right, football. What have you yes, got? Footy. Now we're, I'm back on track. Jimmy's back. You are. Well, you, you, you're on the board at least. I'm on the board. Yeah, I know. I've got to run on the board, mate. You got to you got to get off your duck. Seriously, got because I sacked my portfolio manager, sacked my tipster. He's gone. Yeah. yeah. Um. Thanks for thanks for your help. Not. Um. And I got myself back in action, and uh, and I backed myself, and I got up, and it was fantastic. I think it was the Broncos beating beating Parramatta up in Darwin, um, yeah. where we saw all and get to our Darwin listeners as well. We got a huge population of listeners up there, uh, and that went quite well. Now you first. But I'm back on the board. Um, you had a win as well, so you're like four from four or something. Yeah, yeah, just just a lazy four from four. <laughs> Double it up, mate. Okay, so, so this is going to be okay. a combined multi. You and me combined multi, and we'll see how we go. Well, I've, show I've, us actually, a risk. I've actually got two because one of them's for tonight, and I, I doubt many will get in there for tonight's game. And that's that's the Saints to cover the line versus Port negative twelve and a half. Yep. Um, I don't think Port will be able to score uh, heavily against the Saints defense <sighs> and missing a few forwards. Um, so Are they really? Saints, yeah, yeah um, uh, Todd Marshall's out okay. and uh, uh, Georgie Artis, unfortunately, didn't even knee in the SNFL. So okay. um, they've only got Dixon and that's basically it in terms of the big forwards. Um, so Saints to, be, to cover the line there and Lions to cover the line versus Frio. I think that's Saturday night up at the Gabba. The Lions are just so hot up there. They uh, play fantastic footy. The line's 34 and a half points, but I think they're going to cover that quite easily. Okay, um, not a problem at all. Well. So they're, they're my two tips for the week. Mate, not bad at all. Now, I've got my first off, I'm still going against Parramatta, um, and fans of the show will know that I just, uh, you know, I did, I did well last week, um, and all my Parramates uh, hate when I do this, but, look, I just don't think they're a much chop. 
Now, a bit of risk on the game tonight. I think that the Knights will come close, if not actually win. I'm not happy to take them on completely, um, but I think that the Knights have got a six and a half start. That's good enough for me. If you can get six and a half, take it, because um, that's a that's a converted try. And so, yeah, get on the get on the Knights with the points and bet with your head not over it. I think that's what you have to say. But anyway, look, that's my tip. That's my tip of the week. I think that the Knights will get up or come close tonight. So. Take them with the points there at a buck ninety. Multi it all up in together. Myself and Heath make yourself a bit of money, but probably just keep you know keep it sensible. Um, mate, that's all the time we've got. Yep, uh, we've got a huge week next week. Absolutely. Oh, what, do we what do we got next uh, week? Go. RBA RBA meeting. Oh, Fed that meeting. Yep. Oh, uh, zero percent we... chance that there's going to be a rate hike. What here in Australia? Yeah. Yes. 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 Sorry. Yeah. yeah that's that's a given. They're, they're going to hold. Fed looks like twenty five basis points is is baked yeah. in. Especially after the strong consumer numbers last night, and then so, we got, um, yeah, then we got bank bank earnings here in Australia. NAB, ANZ, wow. Macquarie at the end of the week. Yeah. Retail sales, PMIs across the board, and US jobs to end the uh, the week as well. So it's a massive week. Okay. China and Japan are on holiday for half the week as well. So um, yeah, it's oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's Can't fine. get much bigger than that. Well, uh, of note, just sort of going back on the RBA, and this is the last thing, and then we've actually sort of got to go, is that Gareth Ed from the CBA, who has been picking these things like a dirty nose, is still saying rate hike next week from the RBA, even though the market is absolutely saying it's not going to happen. So this is, wow. this is a – there is actually a market to be traded right now on this one. If you believe in Gareth, good friend of the show, go nuts. Um, rates up another 25 points. If you don't and you go with the market, then so be it, and that's it. I think the market cool. will probably come off a touch. It's a huge call, but he's been cool. Robertson Crusoe on this stuff before, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden everyone's just like, oh, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen, and Gareth was just like, <laughs> hold the line. He still sees that there's enough reason for them to, to, to be an increase. I'll tell you what, Philip Lowe would not be able to buy bananas in public. Oh, mate. If he, he did is, If he's not already the most hated man in Australia, he uh, he would be if, if that was that was to happen. Loves an enemy. All right, mate. That's all the time that we've got. No worries. Uh, thanks for joining us, everyone, on this one. Um, yeah, brought to you by whoever. It's produced by whoever. Um, Heath is uh, is on Twitter. I'm on Twitter as well. Um, check out everything else you need to do. And thanks, everyone. And thank you for the sponsorship, Australian Mutual Funds Exchange. It's been amazing. Go and check them out. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, have a good one.